Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Nifscope tutorial video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to edit UV maps with scoring meshes within Nifscope. So for the purpose of this tutorial video, I've gone ahead and got myself two meshes here, which I want to copy the textures from the one on the right over to the one that I've got sitting on the left here. So this is some Dwemer stuff and this is some Snow Elf stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the part that I want to go ahead and change. I'll see I've got my Nitri shape selected here. And I'm going to go under the BS Lighting Shader property. And in there, I've got BS Shader Texture Set. You'll see the different textures that are being used here. So, got the normal and everything. Sometimes you have more. And the easiest way of doing this, you don't have to select all of these and you get to keep all of the properties that you want, is to go to the texture that you want here. So, select it in the render window. I want this part, actually, no, this part here for the main section. And then I'm going to go ahead to the BS Lighting Shader property. I'm going to alt-click, block, copy the branch. I'm going to delete the one that's over here. So block, remove. Select the Nitro shape that it came under in the tree. Alt-click, block, paste branch. And you'll see that I've taken the texture set from here over to here along with all of the settings. So you'll see that it's just as shiny. It's got all the gloss and everything. So it's going to match this. Now, why would we need to do the UV map? Well, in this instance, this looks pretty much perfectly fine and I can leave it, but I'm going to be taking the rim and I'm going to be taking this part here off of this mesh and we'll see what happens when I do exactly the same thing for this. So I'm going to go block, I'm going to remove that, I'm going to paste the branch that I want there. And you'll see that it has put the texture that I wanted on there. Unfortunately, it does not line up correctly. So the UV map is the way that you spread the texture across your 3d model correctly so it looks right and the uv map is already here it's just completely wonky so i can select the piece that i want i can alt click texture and uv map you can do the same over here from the nitro shape you can get access to the same thing and you'll see i get my little uv editor here and you'll be able to see the texture visually this does copy infinitely across the grid as well so if it's seamless that definitely helps in which case this sort of is and I can select the entire section for the entire UV map by just click and dragging and letting go. And I can go ahead and move it around. You've got to click on the right piece. Sometimes it's quite fiddly. And as I move it around, you'll see that it changes what I've got selected. This is a really good way as well of just figuring out what you're selecting. You get the right bit, you move it around and you take a look in the render window at what's moving and you'll know you've got the right part. Now, just to make sure you haven't got all this selected, click anywhere in the grid so you can see what you're doing, get it to a good angle. And you can also knock the grid off in NIFScope using the G key. Just an extra little tip there. And what I want to do is I obviously want to get this rotated because it's just at the complete wrong rotation. So I can go ahead, alt click, and you can see when you've got something selected, you can select all. So if you've got one piece selected, you want to select the rest, you can do that. If you want to select anything connected to just one vertice, because there are layers on here, sometimes you can't see it, but there are layers on layers of UV mapping. And some UV maps are a lot worse than others. They can be quite the mess. So you usually select a vertice, alt click, and you can select connected. And then if I drag this, and I told you, it can be pretty fiddly sometimes. If I get this to work, let's try, try zooming in and grabbing it. Why? Just doesn't want to do it. Never does in a tutorial, does it? Nope. Very annoying. So you'll select connected. Come on, work for me. There we go. Okay, so connected, you'll move it. You'll see there are parts underneath. Uh, another little thing that I'm going to mention is although there are parts that are not directly connected, you'll see that sometimes when you move one entire selection away from another, they were intended to either be on top of each other or next to each other, and you can end up with a seam somewhere. So you do really want to be quite careful about that. But in this case, I want to keep all of this together. So I'm going to do that. But the other thing is obviously when you right click, you've got other options like scaling and such. I'm just going to cover rotation for the minute. So I'm going to select them. You'll see that you've also got shortcuts for each of these things that you can do, which are really useful. So I'm going to Alt and R to rotate. I'm going to select the angle as 90. And as soon as I've done that, you can see that it's already starting to look better. But there's another part of this that I actually want to use. There we go. Now I'll just drag it. It works. 
Um, but yeah, you can see there's another part that I want to use. I want to use that sort of nice edge there. So let's get it about there. And that looks a lot nicer. So we've got a bit of a bit of a contrast going there. And I can go ahead and I can do the same for this selection. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to knock that off. And I'm going to select probably the same the same bit actually. I'm going to go with, with that same texture again. I'm going to copy that. Go under here, get rid of that block. And I'm going to paste it under this nitro shape. As you can see again, it's all out of whack. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of that. Rotate it by 90. You can of course also change the size. So if you scale it. Just beware that you might go out of bounds of what you're trying to, to get to. And in some cases, you'll find that you need to shrink it. Uh, shrinking it can be a bit of a problem. The reason being that if I made this too small, sure, it would fit in somewhere. But when you look at the mesh, it ends up being stretched across. The texture is far too stretched across the mesh. And for something of this size, it looks terrible. For smaller items, you'll probably get away with it. But for bigger items, just be careful that you don't make this too stretched so smaller is going to stretch it and larger with some uh, textures can be actually quite better because you'll you'll get more onto it it'll look a hell of a lot better but in this case that was made far far too small so i'm just going to control z until i get back to where i need to and i should be able to move this around to roughly where i need now one thing i am just gonna spot here you'll see the seam that i was talking about so these are both together. Now on the texture that it had selected before, that didn't matter because the way the texture was. But in this case, I want to separate a lot of these. So I'm going to go ahead, select connected. And you can see I can start to move these from each other. And I'm guessing that if I stick it on the end of here, I can start to maybe connect that seam up if I line this upright. And I can start to make it look a lot better. So here's some of the tricks with the uv maps you have to move bits around you have to figure out what you're messing with and you have to try and get it selected and budge it into the right place and eventually you'll be able to align all this and get things to look right so that is how you edit uv maps now if you find that there's any information that i've missed please do feel free to leave me a comment down below as i'm not an expert with nif scope by any means but i have messed around with it enough to to know the basics uh, there's also a lot more information over on the NIF Tools Wiki, so you can go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description down below. But before I go, I am just going to show you the finished product of what I was trying to do here because I was trying to achieve this particular mesh for a reason for a project I'm working on. And if I just go to it in here, you'll see what I managed to do in the end. I've got it all lined up, no visible seams, and it looks amazing. So... That's the final product that you can end up with, other than just a, a horrible mess. And that is it. And that is it for another NIF Scope tutorial video. So I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments section below. You can also go ahead and check out the rest of my work over on my website at www.darkfox127.co.uk and also check out all the links down below, such as the one for our community Discord, where you can come along, talk about mods, share mods, you can share ideas, you can get help with mods and all of that good stuff. So please come ahead and join us if you wish. Hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time.